Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're doing great. And today in the second installment of Forgotten Characters, we're going to be taking a look at Mike McAdam, who was an inept house detective in Tintin in America. McAdam is first seen two-thirds of the way through the book Tintin in America, where he is called to try and recover Snowy, who'd been kidnapped for a ransom. He first appears pompously barging into Tintin's room, where he goes on and on about his detecting expertise. He's kind of a stereotypical fat American, but soon cuts to the chase and begins detecting. Much to Tintin's surprise though, without even asking any questions, McAdam already comes up with a detailed description about the kidnapper. Completely unaware of his foolishness and arrogance, McAdam becomes even more and more convinced that he's going to find Snowy, and even tells Tintin that he will be back with him within the hour. Even though what McAdam said and claimed to be is completely irrational and utter nonsense, Tintin was still left flabbergasted, saying that he only thought detectives like that existed in real life. True to his word though, McAdam was back within the hour and was warmly greeted by Tintin. Unfortunately though, the dog he brought back was not quite what Tintin was looking for. He unwittingly took back Fritzy, this older woman's dog, and she really let him have it. He received a violent blow to the head from her umbrella, but soon got back up on his feet again. Yet again he fabricates another description of a possible kidnapper, this time mistaking the lady for a 20 year old man with two back teeth missing. Strangely enough though, Tintin trusted McAdam again, this time waiting 5 hours till he came back. Eventually, McAdam arrives at Tintin's apartment again, this time bringing with him 17 different dogs. It's at this point that Tintin finally learns that McAdam is quite a hopeless incompetent detective, and politely, or rather not so politely, dismisses him. Once Tintin decides to take over the case for himself, we don't see McAdam for over 10 pages. He next reappears when Tintin goes missing, or rather is kidnapped at his banquet of honour, and McAdam goes straight into detecting. We all know that McAdam is a dedicated and committed detective, but there's no denying that his skills, or lack thereof, leave quite a lot to be desired. But anyway, he went straight out to go and find Tintin with a $5,000 incentive. In the next frame he's seen walking snowy in the dark in order to try and find Tintin, and we can tell from the text that he seems to be nyctophobic, i.e. he's scared of the dark. Now, what happens next is arguably one of the most discussed topics in the world of Tintin and Tintinologists, and that is the death of Mike McAdam. Now before we get into the nitty gritty of reading between the lines and, and analyzing in depth and inferring things from various sources, let's just talk about what we can see in the images so far. So in the next part of the story, McAdam lights a cigar in order to keep his spirits up, and Snowy notices a funny smell, which is most likely the chloroform used by the gangster who is most likely Sam in order to capture McAdam. In the next frame, Snowy is seen shocked as McAdam is yanked from the leash and dragged behind the bush, but the big question is still left standing. Did he or did he not make it out alive? Well, to decide, I've compiled a list of reasons for and against his death, and then, once I've discussed them, I'll come up with a verdict. Point number one four. Death is not a new concept in Tintin. And what I mean by that is, Hergé is no stranger to killing off characters, regardless of how important they are. Prior to Tintin in America, we had seen the death of tons of Russians in Tintin in the land of Soviets, and the death of Tom in Tintin in the Congo. And then after Tintin in America, there's the death of Mitsurato by Harakiri, a type of ritual Japanese suicide, the shocking death of Frank Wolf in Explorers on the Moon, and the list goes on. Point two four is that it highlights the gangster's ruthlessness, an idea that Hergé might have wanted to have shown through the death of McAdam. I guess the idea here is that imprudent people like McAdam are at risk in America, especially in the 30s, because these gangsters do not take any prisoners, and it leaves people like McAdam super vulnerable. Now this may not be a very strong point, but I do think it's something, and it's that a great percentage of Tintinologists think that McAdam did die, including Michael Farr. All you have to do to prove it is go into the Tintinologist.org forums, and it's right there. Now for point one against, and that is that there's no justifiable reason to kill him. He's a harmless character who was introduced purely for comedic purposes, and really did not deserve the fate that Hergé dished out to him. Point number two against is that the gangsters just simply wouldn't waste their time on him. The gangsters know everything in Chicago, they know he's an incompetent detective, so why on earth would they risk being pursued by the police and potentially being arrested just to kill McAdam? Killing him will only make trouble for them later on. Well there you go, there are my five points, and because of the fact that there were more points for, and those points were slightly more convincing to me, I have to say that I'm attached to the fact that McAdam did die. But of course I know that this is subject to disagreement and debate, and coupled with the facts that Hergé died over 35 years ago and this book is approaching 100 years old, I guess we'll never know the answer to it. On a different note, McAdam can be seen next to three members of the Kiosk Brotherhood on the inside of the Egmont hardcover copies of Tintin books. And also, like R.W. Trickler, a character whom we discussed in the previous Forgotten Characters episode, McAdam does not make any appearance in the Tintin animated series from 1991. 
Well, there you have it, guys. That's all there's left to say about the clumsy character of Mike McAdam. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.